Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, pup date time, 20 months old today. If you're new to this channel, I do these types of videos every single month on my Bull Mastiff Tua as he turns another month older. I do these types of update videos just to give anybody that would be interested in the Bull Mastiff breed or currently has one, just to give you guys kind of an update on what to expect possibly with your dog as they grow and just to be a great research tool for anybody that would be interested in the breed also. There's not a whole lot out there on bull mastiffs breaking things down like this. So when I got him, I just decided this would be kind of a cool project for me to do. Uh, not only for myself to look back on one day when he's no longer with us, but like I said, just to create a great research tool for people interested in the breed. Uh, I do touch on some main things in this style video every single month, which is growth, food, socialization, drooling, barking, and his energy levels. And then I just kind of hit on other things that just seem to be noteworthy from the month as well. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less. But if you are interested in the Bull Mastiff breed, go ahead and stick around for the update, pup date, 20 months video. So like I said, there's um, some new things that I like to hit on in each of these videos each month other than the main things that I normally do. And some new things from this month is we did get him back into the vet again just for you know his shots, his routine checkup, things like that. Um, he did really great at the vet, got a clean bill of health from him. Uh, as I've said in, the, in these videos many times before, he loves people so much, it's almost to a fault. So he has no issue going to the vet or anything like that. Um, the last time we had him there, he was like super, super, super excited. So it was almost difficult for them to, you know, look in his ears, um, give him shots, things like that. This time he did much better. He was still very excited, but we were able to calm him down quicker. <laughs> um, maybe five, ten minutes and he was kind of letting them do whatever they needed to do. Uh, gave him lots of treats and stuff so the drool was flying a little bit. Not too bad though. And uh, yeah, I mean they said everything looked great. Uh, no issues whatsoever. And uh, I guess we'll see the vet again in uh, another year, give or take. But uh, everything went great uh, as far as that goes. The other thing from this month, kind of health related to Tua, is I had posted a picture on on YouTube, on the channel, about how he had a cracked and dry nose, and I was just kind of looking for recommendations if any of you dog owners or bull mastiff owners had ever experienced an issue like that. And I uh, got a few responses, so thank you very much if you did respond. Um, I was basically asking, you know, what uh, what you guys use. Is there some sort of like uh, lip, not lip balm, but like a nose balm or anything that you guys put on there? Did get some suggestions. And I did end up going with a, a product on off of Amazon called Blissful Dog Nose Balm or Nose Butter. And uh, I've been putting that on, you know, kind of periodically and it, it definitely is helping, but I've slowed down putting it on because for whatever reason, Tua absolutely hates it. Um, I pretty much have to like straddle him between my legs and, and grab his face and I don't know what it is because it doesn't really seem to have a smell to it and I can it's not like his nose is tender or anything either because he'll let me touch and rub his nose um, as much as I want and push on it when I don't have that uh, that nose butter on my fingers and he's fine with that but as soon as I get that nose butter out and go to spread that on his nose he absolutely hates it so I'm kind of just been hitting it like every other day or every third day instead of you know once or twice a day like I would like to but uh, his nose is getting better with that and why he hates that so much I have no idea uh, but we're just dealing with it and uh, the nose is getting better it's not as dry as it was and uh, kind of healing up here the last kind of new thing for the month. Uh, in last month's video, the 19 month update video, I kind of very quickly threw in there that uh, 
As far as raw feeding goes, I put in an order with a raw dog food company. Uh, so I'll tell you guys a little bit about that. It's called Laboratory and uh, they'll ship it right to your door. And basically they kind of have, uh, what they do is they grind all their ingredients up and put them in uh, tubes and freeze them. And like I said, they'll ship it right to your door. I'm very far away from where he's at. And uh, by the time it got here, you know, it was air mailed. Everything, some of the tubes were still completely frozen and some of them were starting to thaw or completely thawed, but they were still extremely cold. So uh, I just went ahead, put them in the freezer, froze them right back up and uh, unbelievable service from this company, guys. Texting back and forth with him over there, uh, answering any questions that I can, that I had for him and, and shipping it as far as he did and it still worked out shipping it right to our door was uh, unbelievable to me. I can't say enough good things about him and uh, laboratory, but basically what they do is it's, it's and I'm, I'm not, I'm going to miss some things here, but here's kind of a list of what they do. It's a ground up chicken and turkey bone in um, product. They also do, you know, different organ meats such as heart and liver. There's also some salmon and green tripe in there. And you know, there's a few other products as well, but it's all very, very high quality ingredients. Uh, they definitely know what they're doing over there. Absolutely love the product. Tua absolutely loves the product. Uh, scarfing it down every day. And uh, I'm still kind of just supplementing with it. I'm probably at like an 80-20 split with 80% being raw. I'm, I'm going through it as slow as I can because the only downside on this is the price. Um, it's, it is very expensive. But also, you know, you're going to get what you pay for and this stuff is absolutely top-notch quality. But I'm just unsure how often I'll be reordering. I will definitely be reordering. I just don't know how often just because of the price. But yeah, I can't say enough good things. One more time, that is Laboratory. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me and I'll uh, be sure to point you in the right direction. But raw food in general, guys, look into it. Even if, you know, you can start on your own and you can start very slow and it's just, it's so much better for the dog than just feeding straight kibble alone. Even if you're not going into full raw, just working your way up to, you know, like an 80-20 split like me or just get up to 50-50 or whatever you're comfortable with and uh, whatever your, your dog seems to react best to. But definitely look into raw feeding, guys. But now we'll go ahead and get started on the main things that we hit on in all of these videos, and we're gonna go ahead and start with growth like we usually do. Last month, Tua was 152 pounds. Now at 20 months old, he is 154 pounds, so he gained two pounds. We are still gaining weight, uh, very slowly but surely, still putting it on. These dogs are known to gain weight until, you know, about the age of two, possibly even up to three. So he's still slowly putting this on, which is to be expected. Uh, he's still definitely on the leaner side though. I mean, he's he is filling out and it's noticeable, but you can still see his ribs when the sun's hitting him just right. And he still has the bulging muscles in his legs and some veins in his legs. And he is, uh, he's not overweight at all yet, at least in my opinion. And when we had him at the vet, they didn't mention anything about that either. They just said he looked really great, really healthy, and didn't give any suggestions about putting on weight or keeping weight off or anything like that. So he's definitely on the bigger side for a bull mastiff. His dad was 150, so last month is when he surpassed his dad. But he's very he's very tall for a bull mastiff. I said last week I wasn't going to measure his height anymore at the shoulder until probably two years old because it, it was such small increases that it's getting difficult for me to even eyeball the differences month to month. But last month he was 30 inches at the shoulder, and uh, that's that's very tall for a bull mastiff. Males in general are only supposed to get 27, 28 inches tall, so that's where that extra weight's coming from as well. With him still being lean, as he's a little bit on the taller side for a bull mastiff. Food is the next thing that we generally uh, would touch on, but I kind of already hit on that in the opening of this video with the raw food and everything. So we're gonna go ahead and skip that and uh, move into socialization, which would be the next thing. It was a pretty good month as far as like socializing him with people goes. Not so much for dogs, really. Uh, just, I mean, he did see some dogs, but they were ones that he was already familiar with, so we already know he's great with them. Um, we got him to a park when we took our kids there. It was a very hot day, uh, humid day, muggy day. 
But uh, he just kind of strolled around and uh, as the kids played and we walked him around, he walked with the kids and there really wasn't much for people or dogs out there that day. But still nice to get him out in unfamiliar environments with new sights, sounds, smells, everything like that. Uh, socializing is kind of just an ongoing process that you should, you know, go out of your way to do with your dog. Uh, so that they're familiar with everything and like I always say that first year that you have your dog You should pretty much make that a, a part-time job to socialize them and uh, Go out of your way almost every single day to expose them to different animals people um, Environments everything like that and that's I, I mean I've said a million times on this channel that to me is the number one thing that you can do to set yourself up and your dog up for success in dog ownership. Um, we also had my daughter's birthday in our backyard this month. We had a lot of people over, a lot that Tua was unfamiliar with, and he did really great with all of them. Um, like I always say, he loves people so much, so that first five, ten minutes, he's you know pretty excited and can kind of be hitting legs and stuff, running into people. Nothing crazy, but you know, he's a 150 pound dog. So you, you gotta control him a little bit in those first few minutes and then eventually he calms down and it's all good and he, he's so chill then at that point. So really, really great with people. And uh, like I said, no like strange dogs or anything for him this month, but as I record this, we're actually kind of getting ready to uh, head out to my mom's lake, which you guys have seen many times in these videos. And uh, my little brother and his family are out there and they have about a year old Great Pyrenees who Tua has never met. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. He's a big dog. He's probably pushing 100 pounds. And uh, he is unneutered as well. So we're gonna have two big unneutered dogs together for the first time. So fingers crossed. Um, I'm fairly confident that everything should go just fine because Tua's never had an issue with any dogs to this point, but it uh, should be interesting, and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna have videos of these dogs' interactions in the coming days and weeks here. Uh, I'll definitely get some stuff recorded for you guys so you can uh, see them playing together, but should be a fun day and uh, interesting day to say the least. Energy is the next thing that I normally touch on, and uh, with Tua, you know, aging, he's 20 months old now, we're approaching that two years old, for the last, you know, probably four, five, six months, I've been telling you guys that his energy is slowing down, and it still is, guys. It's it's noticeably slow, and I think a lot of that does have to do with the heat right now, since we are in the middle of summer. But uh, even when we're inside, you know, he's he's got his moments and he has his days where his energy is high, but for the most part, he's pretty chill, just relaxing, hanging out by us, uh, sleeping, chewing, whatever, and not really doing a whole lot and we'll have them outside running around in the backyard and especially in the heat now I mean after about 10-15 minutes he's good with that he wants to come inside and just lay down and relax in the air conditioning um, he, he'll definitely still turn it up but this isn't the type of dog now as he's getting to be close to that two years old that you're gonna you know want to consistently take on you know two three mile walks every single day uh, where when when he was younger and if it's cooler out, you know, he'd do that with no issue whatsoever And he still does but it's not something that you'd want to like push them especially in this heat um, So I would say his energy is definitely falling in line with that breed standard of being on the lazier side You know most days most of the time and in general Drooling is the next thing that I touch on and I would say that's kind of slowly been increasing with age. 90% um, of his drooling is related to just when he's eating and drinking and most of that being, you know, when he's drinking. Also noticing a lot this summer when he's hot and panting, lots of drool will form, you know, in his jowls and drip down and that can be kind of messy as well. But when he's hot and panting, he's outside obviously, so it's not so much of an issue. Unless there's like people or something coming over then you know, he might kind of get some drool on them. So we'll keep a rag around like this This last, uh, the, the other weekend when my daughter's birthday was in the backyard and he was outside and it was fairly hot, so he was panting a lot. And he might've got a couple drool streaks on some people, but I had a rag and I was just kind of, kind of keeping him wiped off as good as I could, but not a massive issue. The main issue is food and water. And if you're able to just feed, feed them outside and give them water outside, then it's almost a non-issue. Uh, just wipe them up before they come in and uh, that's kind of what we do 
So drooling is definitely a big issue when people are considering this breed of dog. And it definitely is an issue, but it's a, it's a very, what I would call, controllable issue. For the most part, at least uh, in my experience and with Tua, when he's inside and not really doing a whole lot, there is no drool. It's just in certain situations, uh, you learn pretty quick when your uh, individual dog is going to have situations where he may or may not be drooling, and you just kind of work with it and roll with the punches. Um, definitely not something that I think should be a deal breaker, unless you're a very, 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 very clean person, uh, but then maybe you should reconsider having a dog in general, if that's the case. Uh, barking is the last thing, and this has been unchanged for you know, many, many, many months now. The, the only time that Tua barks is when he's in our backyard, and that's because he cannot see over our privacy fence that we have, so if there's noises or anything on the other side, he'll kind of bark at it, you know, I would assume just as a warning, and he's maybe a little bit confused himself since he can't see exactly what it is. But beyond that, uh, bull mastiffs are known as the silent watchdog, and Tua's growing right into that breed standard, doesn't really bark at all except for in that one situation in our backyard when he can't see what's on the other side of the fence and he's hearing stuff. Uh, inside though doesn't bark, front yard doesn't bark. Um, definitely not a big barking dog. At least in my experience, you know, there's going to be exceptions to every rule, every breed, things like that. But if you are looking for a big dog that's not much of a barker, in general, then uh, Bull Mastiff, you know, maybe for you. But that's all I have for the uh, update pup date 20 months video, guys. If you're still around watching, really do appreciate it. Um, keep making comments down there in the comment section. We're helping a lot of people out that are interested in the breed. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.